what's happening to our country, whether it's the borders or the elections or kinds of things like this, where the DOJ has become a weapon for the Democrats, an absolute weapon. And it seems that every time my polls, you know, we're leading by a lot. And we're leading by a lot in a place called Iowa, a lot. And, and not only with the Republicans, but we're leading against Biden by a tremendous amount. They haven't seen anything like it. And they feel, I guess, they want to try and demean and diminish and, and uh, frighten people. But they don't frighten us because uh, we're going to make America great again. That's all there is. We're going to make our, our country. Our country, Sean, is a mess. You know it better than anybody. I mean, frankly, your reporting is incredible. I, I'll be honest. I have never been more fearful of the state of this country than I am right now. Yeah. Fearful about the economy, foreign policy, our future, our kids, our grandkids. I've never been this way. Well, you look at Biden with these leaders, and they're at the top of their game, and they're looking at each other like they don't even believe what's happening. Our country is no longer respected. Think of it. Three years ago, energy independent, powerful military that was totally rebuilt. The president announced three days ago, which he should never have said, probably classified information, that we have no ammunition. Now, what do you think China says when they hear we have no ammunition? Uh, no, it's a very, very sad thing. If you look at the worst border in history, we had the best border in history. We had, three years ago, the best border we've ever had. We built hundreds of miles of wall. We got Mexico free of charge. You know, they say about Mexico. Mexico gave us billions of dollars worth of soldiers for years, 28,000 soldiers guarding our border. We had the best numbers we've ever had. Today we have, I think, the worst numbers in the world, because I don't think there's any country in the world that would stand for what's happening to us with millions of people flowing in from, by the way, mental institutions, insane asylums. They don't like me using those names, insane asylums. But we have very bad, very sick people, very ill people coming into our country prisons and jails all over the world. And it's not the four countries that we sort of consider neighbors. It's all over. Last week, we had 129 countries, representatives of people that came into our country illegally. And we're losing our country, and we're losing the spirit of our country. But I will tell you, make America great again, and MAGA, and America first, and all of these things that we talk about, there's never been more spirit. Look at this crowd. There's never been more spirit than we have right now. 2024. 2024 is the most important election that we've ever had. And I used to say it with 2016, and I meant it 100 percent, but we're now — we're going into an almost a communistic state, and I think maybe we're even there. When you look at what they're doing with — you could call it fascist, you could call it Marxist. You could call it communist. What they're doing, like with the Department of Justice, they've totally weaponized it. It's weaponized like we've never had this before. It's not only me. Catholics, you see what's happening? Uh, parents at school boards, they're being harassed by the Justice Department, by the FBI. Nobody's ever seen what's happening right now. And we have a guy, the head of this country, it's, it's probably not him, it's people around him. They have people that are vicious, and smart, and have horrible ideas for our country. So it's really the people, in my opinion, because I don't think this guy can put together two sentences. I watched him last night. He's almost... He's almost incapable of talking. And, you know, we have... I'm not, I'm not sure he knows today's Tuesday, sir. Well, we have, a, we have a problem. We have the potential of a war beyond the war with Russia and Ukraine, and that would have never happened before. By the way, if I were president, that would have never happened. If I were president, Ukraine and Russia. I want to get to that. Huh? You know, I came here today, and I've, I've watched all of, I watched your two hours with Mark Levin. I watched your hour yeah. with Tucker. I watched your hour um, uh, who, who, with Brett Baer. You did two hours with me. I watched you on Maria. I, I watched your interviews. And I, on fake news, CNN, um, I watched that, too. Well, that was a good one. That oh, was a good one. They had a town that was, hall. That was a Trump They class. ended up firing the head of CNN. Because, yeah. And they got the highest ratings in 11 years, and they fired. It's supposed to be the opposite. By the way, you might want to start a show, and at the end of every show, say to somebody, you're fired. That would work, right? You're fired. Uh, all right. Look, but I wanted to talk about the problems and the solutions. 
In other words, what are the, identify the problems and the solutions. Okay. We cannot ignore today's events, today when you put out your, your truth yeah. social post. And by that, I want to talk about what is clearly now and what the Judiciary Committee under Jim Jordan is looking into, whether or not our FBI and our Department of Justice have been weaponized and politicized. And I have two headlines here. You know, FBI tipped off Biden team, Secret Service, about plan to interview Hunter, according to a supervisory right. agent who retired. Tomorrow, there will be another IRS whistleblower, just like this man, Mr. Chapley, who came out and said, no, he should have been indicted on felony charges, and I've been doing this, meaning Hunter Biden. Then I can take you back, and you know that I cover this every single night, and my show was vindicated on the issue right. of Trump-Russia collusion that never occurred. The Durham report corroborated it, the Horowitz report. It's a long way of me asking this very simple, basic question. And that is, if you look at Hillary Clinton and the way she was treated, no prosecutor would prosecute, 33,000 subpoenaed emails deleted, devices destroyed. Then her dirty dossier. And that dossier was used to get four FISA warrants. And then you look at the FBI in 2019. They had Hunter Biden's laptop in December of 2019. They verified it in March of 2020. And yet FBI agents in the months leading up to that election were meeting with big tech companies, telling them, according to Yoel Roth, the former Twitter integrity site head, telling them that it might be about Joe or Hunter. That laptop story got censored. The American people were denied the truth about what would be a bombshell story. And by the way, it still is censored because they haven't really gotten into the meat with all of the great reporting done, and this has been some great reporting done. Generally speaking, the press is fake. It's fake, and it's just uh, horrible, actually. But there's still been some great reporters and great reporting done, and you are at the lead. You've been incredible. But when you look... Thank you. But, Sean, when you look at... That they haven't even gotten to the bottom of the laptop. They don't want to put the pictures in. They don't want to. They have pictures in there that anybody else, they go away for 10 years. What happened to Hunter is he got a traffic ticket. Other people are being sentenced to many years in jail for doing much less. He got a traffic ticket. The only good thing is the people know it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Now, uh, Jim Jordan and Jamie Comer, these guys are doing a great job, but. The problem is you find out the crime, but nothing happens with it. Instead, they go after you. Like, for example, Hillary Clinton's home wasn't raided. Yeah. Joe Biden's garage wasn't raided. The UPenn Center wasn't raided. The University of Delaware wasn't raided. His home, beach home, I don't know how he affords a beach home on a senator's salary, that wasn't raided. Hunter Biden has, is being protected, obviously. Um, cocaine in the White House, 10-day investigation, they... they they literally interview nobody. Okay, investigation's over. Would that have happened in your White House? Well, well, listen to this. Even you mentioned the beach home. Well, the beach home had all these documents in it, right? It was by the Corvette. They're on the floor. Classified documents. No, that's not the place. beach home. That, the beach home was another place no, they no, found. No, no, this is also the beach home. And they had the Corvette, where they had the Corvette. Yeah. And a tremendous amount of payment was made for that home by somebody to Joe Biden. And it was a big story for about one day, and then you don't hear about it anymore. It's incredible. But when you look at the documents all over the place, whatever happened to that one? They go after me on documents, and I have the Presidential Records Act, which is a big deal. And the Presidential Records Act is, a, is, is an act. <laughs> Thank you. They Why know weren't the, their homes raided? They know better rated. than anybody else. Why weren't their homes raided? Well, let me just tell you, I'm protected by Presidential Records Act. And they come up with this obscure, crazy theory, a madman theory. This guy is a deranged prosecutor who's had tremendous failures all over the place. He's a nasty, horrible human being. They come after me. Now, they have... Biden has many, many thousands... I mean, he's got 2,000, almost 2,000 boxes of documents. They can't get to him because the college or whatever that has him doesn't want to give him. But, and he probably told the college, but more importantly, China gives millions of dollars to UPenn. That's where he has some. He's got them all over the place. And maybe worst of all, he's got documents in Chinatown. In Chinatown. Many, many documents, boxes of documents. You don't ever hear about this. All you hear about is Trump. And I'm totally covered by the Presidential Records Act and also by the Clinton-Sox case. You know what that is. That's where Clinton took out 
tapes in his socks, and he put them in his drawer. And they sued him, just on a very civil basis, and he ended up winning the lawsuit. And the judge said he can have whatever he wants. And that's called the presidential records. What about Sandy Berger shoving documents yeah, yeah, down his they, pants? Oh, there are many seat. instances of it. But especially when you're president, and Joe Biden wasn't president, you're only covered by the Presidential Records Act if you're president. Joe Biden wasn't president. In fact, Joe Biden was senator for many years, and they've got a lot of classified documents when he was senator, and other Democrat senators can't even believe the fact that he has these documents. Can't even, they said, I watched Dick Durbin. Here's another beauty. I watched Dick Durbin <laughs> saying, I can't believe that he took them. I couldn't, he couldn't even believe it. So it's a very, it's a two-tier system, but it's worse than that. It's a very corrupt system. Okay, so my, my question to you is, when you see that Hillary had top secret classified information, and the conclusion of Jim Comey, no prosecutor would ever prosecute, 33,000 subpoenaed emails deleted, devices destroyed. Okay, then we have the FBI in early October of 2016 sent agents over the pond to meet yeah. with Christopher Steele. They offered him a million dollars to, to verify any part of that to get dossier. Trump. To get Trump. Okay. They couldn't verify it. Then, in late October, even though it wasn't verified, they used that, according to Andrew McCabe, deputy FBI director, without that dirty dossier, they would never have gotten those FISA warrants approved. Now, they knew that they couldn't verify it. The Dura report confirmed none of it was true. And yet, they would use that as a backdoor to spy on your campaign and your presidency. Yep. Is That's that right. a dual system of justice? No, right. And the whole thing with FISA was horrible. But you know, one thing we did that was so great, I fired Comey very early. And a lot of people said, oh, you should have done it. Well, you know, they're given a term. <laughs> they're given a term very early. Not immediately early, but very early, early in a few months. And I got rid of this guy. And by doing that, it was like you threw a rock at a hornet's nest. The whole thing collapsed. You saw the love letters back and forth with the different people talking about the insurance policy. You know what the insurance policy, that was against me. That was how to If she, for it. some reason, loses, darling, we have an insurance policy. The insurance policy is they'll get me out. One way or the other, they'll get me out. Because you know what? This is 30, 35 years of being put into government. And you get there. And initially, I didn't know people in Washington. I was there 17 times in my entire life. I never stayed over, never stayed over before this. All of a sudden, I'm president of the United States. I relate. And we had tremendous people also. Don't forget, biggest tax cuts in history, biggest regulation cuts in history, rebuilt our military, <laughs> took out ISIS. Took out Soleimani, took out al-Baghdadi, the, the two biggest terrorists in the world. I mean, what we did was incredible. Strongest border we've ever had. Everything was good. No inflation. Best economy in history. We did all of this stuff. We had tremendous, we had tremendous people. Look, they made a lot of money. Yeah. No, no, so we had tremendous people. But we also had some, you rely on others. You rely on people that you knew. You rely on other politicians to give you answers. And you find out that they are uh, rhinos or they gave you bad advice. So we had some that weren't good. But when you think, uh, Comey had a term. He had many years left in that term. I said, this guy's bad news. I realized it very early, very early in the administration. I fired him. And it was wild. That's when we found out all of the corruption. Had I not fired me, you wouldn't know any of the things that you were talking you about. You think they right would have destroyed you? Well, they were trying to take me out. Yeah, they were trying to take me out. I mean, it was like a coup. It was like a coup. Had I not, you know, it's very interesting. Some people that are very smart, that you know very well, said when I did it, oh, that was a mistake, that was a mistake, you're going to cause. Now they say it was the greatest instinctual move they've ever seen because Comey was a very bad guy, and Comey led that group of uh, thugs in there. And they were doing a number. They were, it's very dishonest. It's years and years of putting in people, Democrats and rhinos and other people, but putting them into office. And we got rid of a lot of them, but we're going to get rid of a lot more, a lot more, because you have some bad people. One more question on this. In the past, I think it's been a mistake. I, I'm like you. I, I think we should have paper ballots, same-day voting, make Election Day a national holiday. 
and have partisan observers in every precinct well, have. watching well, the and voting voter and then watching the vote counting. And right. when the polls close, declare a winner, game over. Right. But that's not the system we have. Republicans have been reluctant and resistant towards early voting, mail-in voting, and, it, and they've also been resistant towards legal ballot harvesting, which Democrats have mastered, which is why they can hide in their basement, run hundreds of millions of dollars in ads, and, and never answer a press question or shake a hand or kiss a baby or do a town hall. My question is, do you now encourage and embrace early and voting, voting by mail, and legal ballot harvesting? I do, but I also have to say something else, because the one thing a lot of people... But this is important. ...including you, do. don't talk about, they also create phony ballots, and that's a real problem. That's my opinion. But they you, create but a I lot of know, phony ballots. Has your mind shifted? In, in other words, I think if Republicans start out election day down 200, I, 300, 500,000 votes, that's, that becomes nearly impossible to catch up with. For some reason, Republicans always wanted to go out on Tuesday and they wanted to vote, and I respect that. I think it's great. And it would be great if we could get back to one day and we all the things that you said with one thing I agree else, with you. With voter ID. With voter ID. Because the Democrats don't and want signature voter verification. ID. How about this? They don't want voter ID because they want to cheat. You know, they want to cheat. They don't want voter ID. Even the Democrats, regular Democrat people want voter ID, but the leaders don't because they can't cheat. The one thing we have to be very careful of is phony ballots. Everything you say is great, but they create ballots. That's my opinion. And that's the opinion of a lot of people. Will you encourage your voters, based on the system we have, to ha go along with the system of early voting and voting by mail? Because I, I, I think if you don't, you it's a big mistake. No, no, no. I will, but those ballots get lost also, Sean. You know, they send them in, and all of a sudden they're gone. Those ballots get lost also. The answer is I will because you would like it. But you okay. know what? Can You're I be doing honest? It for me. Okay. But a lot. Of, I got to take a break. But Sean, a lot of bad things happen to those ballots also. They're sent in early, and all of a sudden, where are they? Bad, look, we have very corrupt elections. We have no borders. If you don't have borders, and if you don't have good elections, you don't have a country, and that's where we are. But I'm okay. With by the end of by the end of this year, we'll probably have under Joe Biden. Nearly 8 million illegal immigrants since he's been president. Quick, quick break. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.